All right, what's going on guys? So obviously you guys saw my video a couple months ago and by the title you can tell that I did end up getting uh, something. I ended up getting something. It wasn't the original plan, but it is something to sort of keep, like something to work towards, I guess. But I just wanted to make a little reveal video to kind of show you guys what I ended up getting. And a lot of you guys might not be too happy about it, I'm gonna be honest, but you know, this doesn't, it's not really gonna change how like my upload style is. And yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. I will still have all the other cars, like everything you've seen on the channel so far, I will still have access to them. And obviously you guys can let me know if you wanna see more stuff like that. But this is just going to be a channel project like specifically for this channel and to document everything that is going to be done with this so just to sort of give you guys something to like that's exclusive to this channel to watch so I'll go I'll go pull it in let's see if you guys can tell what it is by the sound because it does have a very distinct sound yeah that sounds pretty unique, huh? Oh yeah, here it is. So yeah, this is what I ended up getting. Hell yeah. Alrighty guys, as you can see, this is my new to me 2005 Infiniti G35 sedan. It is a rev up, it's 300 horsepower, you know, VQ 35DE, not an HR. Uh, and this is the car I chose to be the, the channel project. So. Obviously the original plan, uh, you guys don't know this, but my original plan was to get a 2006, another 2006 Lexus IS250, but a manual. And I wanted to supercharge it and just document all the work that I was gonna do to that car. But after more research, um, I found that that was gonna be horrendously expensive, especially compared to something like this, where it would cost at least $6,000 to get the same performance that this offers stock. So I decided to go the more efficient route. These cars are also a lot easier to wrench on, just in general. So that's another reason why I chose this over the IS250. I also, I also got a very good deal on this. Obviously you guys know the sedans are pretty desirable cars, especially with the six speed manual. Uh, there, a lot of them are beat on, a lot of them are, have a lot of engine issues, especially the rev ups, but Thankfully, this one checked all the boxes. It doesn't burn oil. It is actually really like rely. It's been reliable, even though I've only had it for like just over two weeks. But yeah, I mean, this thing has been perfect so far and I'm looking forward to documenting all the work I've done to it or I'm going to do with it. Obviously, I didn't want to start putting any work into it until I made this reveal video. But obviously you can see it's not perfect. You know, some misalignment on the fender. I got some damage right here and I mean, well, this right now is like, this is literally not even like, like stuck on at all, but mechanically it runs perfectly. And I am excited to see what tails this brings to the channel. So I can show you guys a bit around it. I don't know, yeah. Alrighty guys, let's show you under the hood. See what this thing's packing. So, like I previously stated, it is the VQ35DE. Obviously, you can see the dual uh, uh, camshaft, uh, whatever the fuck they're called, the, the VVT solenoids. So that means it is a rev up, it is a real rev up. That is how you can tell. Obviously, the normal standard DE has VVTI on the intake cam, but this one has intake and exhaust cams. That's how you can tell if it's a real rev up. Anyone who says they have a rev up and they only have one cam, uh, VVT solenoid, they're lying. 
So we got this polished and painted plenum, you know, this fucking retarded plastic uh, intake high flow thing. I don't think it does anything. It's horrendously expensive. Thankfully, it came with the car. Uh, there was a ridiculous vacuum leak um, when I first bought it. Like, it literally, the little reducer had a hole in it, and it was after the math. It was right here. So it would have, like, the most astro astronomical rev hang you've ever seen. So I can insert a, insert a clip of that. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, I kind of just fabricated this little, co like, cold-ish warm air intake thing. It's pretty fucking loose. But, yeah, I mean, it's been running perfectly. It, unlike any other VQ, it holds oil. So, like, it, it doesn't burn it. When I go wide open throttle, it doesn't smell like oil. So that is a really, really lucky thing that that happened. Um... Like, honestly, a lot these engines, the rev up specifically, they get a bad rep. Like, there's hundreds and hundreds of videos of, like, saying to completely avoid this engine. And all I really have to say to that is just take care, just do maintenance on your car. Like, I don't know if people are expecting you to not do maintenance. Like, I don't know if people are just expecting you to beat on a VQ, but, like, this is no less, un like, this is no less reliable than a standard VQ or an HR. So, if anything, like, these are more reliable just because they're more reinforced. Like, they have a ladder design so that, like, on the, on the, like, the crankshaft, wherever the, like, the bot, the, the engine block, they have a ladder design so that the, the rotation's more evenly distributed. Like, so, if anything, these engines are more reinforced than the standard VQ. I mean, obviously, they're more finicky because of the dual variable, variable valve timing, but... If you just take care of your cars, like, it, it's, it's going to be fine. And it's going to last you a long time. Like, this thing has just under 180,000 miles on it. Still runs like, I mean, I've, I've driven only one VQ, but still runs like a clock, you know? So, yeah. All right, guys. So, here's the side of the car. Again, I don't know if I stated, but I will be getting these wheels addressed. Like, the wheels are kind of hideous on the silver it looks ridiculous I don't worry I 100% agree but it's a sedan I personally uh, gravitate more towards the sedans than the coupes just because these are more like you can if you have friends you can actually like haul them around like I've had four people in this car and it's just a lot of fun so yeah um, but the overall look of it I, I do prefer the looks of the sedans like just I know, like, you either like the, I don't think there's any in-between with that. Like, you either like the sedans or you like the coupes, at least in my experience. But compared to, like, the 350Z, like, this is, this almost feel like, I've driven a 350Z. I've driven it hard. I've also driven it normally. This feels like a completely different car. I don't know if it's just because Infinity tries to make it more, like, luxurious, but it really does feel more premium. Like, it feels like... Um, I mean, obviously it has the CD00 transmission, uh, CD009 transmission, so it's really hard to drive smoothly, at least, or maybe I just haven't spent a lot of time with it, but, uh, when you're actually, like, g getting on it, it feels like a fucking 350Z, but if you're trying to drive it, it feels like a luxury car, it, like, on, on par of, like, a E93 series or an E92 or like a Lexus, you know? It feels that smooth, like even on the highway, like, like I'd just be driving with one finger, honestly. It's got hydraulic steering, so that's also kind of that BMW feel. But yeah, it's got the sunroof, and I can, I can show you guys the interior. All right, so we got the really dark interior. Um, well, dark-ish, but you know, there's like a surprising amount of room, honestly. Just, like, it's a really comfortable place to be in. It's got the six-speed manual. You know, it's it's mandatory. You, like, do not get, if you're looking, if you're in the market, especially for a sedan, do not get an automatic. Like, the five-speeds, they're okay, but, like, 
if you're buying an Infiniti, like a to have as like a sports car, you're gonna be severely underwhelmed with the automatic. I'm just saying, like banging gears in this thing is fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really anything to go over here. It's got an aftermarket head unit. It's got like subs. It, it, it's wired for like a big ass subwoofer though, but I haven't like actually messed around with all that stuff. But it's got an analog clock if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, manual e-brake, you know, all the good shit. Um, I don't know, I can probably just move this. The rear, again, plenty of room, honestly. I actually haven't sat in the rear, but I, I don't think anyone else has had it. Yeah, this is fine. Like a lot of headroom. I'm like 5'9", five 5'10", five but the headroom is actually substantial for like a Japanese luxury car, honestly. Like I've sat in like ES350s, like I've sat in I, obviously an IS250, more like, compet like competing cars, and the headroom is like, you know, like this is comfortable, honestly, like for real. You got like little storage cubbies. This, I, this looks like an ashtray, actually. I don't know, you know, Japanese cars were on some weird shit. Uh, the windows are like horrendously tinted. Not from me, but yeah. I mean, it's a pretty basic car, little luxury car. Leather, it's the perforated leather, so it's nice and it's not cool at all, actually. It's, it's really hot, like in Kansas, it's very uncomfortably hot right now and it does not help. Um, I guess I can show you the trunk. It's got the automatic release on the key. Pretty decent sized room. Uh, oh, oh, VQ's burn oil, why do you have oil? Yeah, whatever, nigga, you know, just safe. It's better safe than sorry. Yeah, pretty decent amount of room, you know. You got the manual release for emergencies, and shit. It's got the spoiler, the very Nissan, like Nissan really wanted you to know that the spoiler works or something like that. Like they really emphasize that it provides some sort of downforce. But I mean, yeah, overall the car looks good. I can just do a quick little rock around. Yeah, I'm aware of the, I'm aware of the sun, sun damage at the top, but that's an easy fix, especially for, uh, especially for a silver car. But yeah, I mean, I really do like the looks of the sedans. And I'll give it a little rip for you guys soon, but it is a really good performing car. And it's pretty fuel efficient, you know, like 400 miles to the tank, which is not bad for a fucking thirsty ass VQ. But I mean, yeah, bro. Again, those wheels will be addressed. I'm gonna, I might lower it, get some coils for it, do all the tasteful shit. But yeah. So yeah, uh, this is my, my new project car, my new channel type of car. And I look forward to seeing the adventures we have with this thing, all the documentation, working on it, driving it, you know. Hopefully you guys like it. If you guys don't like it, again, let me know Like if you guys wanna see anything specific. I know I was gone for a little bit, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm liking this. I think you guys might like it too. So yeah, let's, let's go for a drive. I can show you what it can do. All right, guys, so we're just gonna go for a quick little drive. Like I said, it's the rev up. So the red line's like between 72 and 7,600 RPM. I don't know for sure. Honestly, can never really know. I'm pretty sure it's 76, but I mean, when I, I tried to bring it up to red line and it was way past seven and a half. So I'm pretty sure it's 7,600. Uh, 7, but yeah, we're just gonna see what this can do. Little joyride, obviously six speed manual. Nothing's really done to it except the intake. So again, like just driving this does not feel like a Z at all. If anything, like it feels really, 
it does not feel as planted as a Z, like turning. It's just not. It just feels smoother. But when you actually like get at the limit, you know, it feels like a Z. It feels like a sports car, which is nice, which is why I want this. So I'll do a little sum right here. It gets up there, you know. Like, this is definitely a rev up. So, yeah. Um, but then you're just chilling. Like, you know, it's just a normal, it's just a luxury car afterwards. After you go crazy, it's good. It's also hot as shit. It says it's 78, but it's probably like, you know. That, that intake in there is not doing anything. Like, it's definitely pulling some timing. Like, this car really likes, like, 70 degrees. Like, that's... With this intake setup I have right now, it's not really going to be impressive at anything over 70 degrees. Because then it just starts pulling timing. Like, BQs are really sensitive to knock. Like, detonation, the detonation knock. And if your engine's, like, just too hot, it'll fucking retard the timing, like, really significantly. But it's still a really fun car. But yeah, I mean, I really do like driving this thing. I do like the car. I My plans for it, honestly, are just to wrench on it, enjoy it. I never really had like a sports car. And this is kind of my chance to have it. And I just want to share it with all of you. My really like my end goal is to have this car turbocharged. That is my end goal, and I want to do all of it. I don't want to use like any up rev. I don't want to use any like any mainstream tuning. I don't want to use any Z1. I want to do it all myself because I kind of know how to tune already. I kind of know the basics. I just want to like really learn with this car. And just build it up, learn from it. That's really my end goal with this car. And I hope I can make it something really cool and document all of it. Rev matching is so easy in this. Yeah, it gets up. It honestly does. Like, nothing like I've ever driven. Like, nothing like BQ. I mean, obviously, I've never driven an HR, but, like, this is fucking quick. It's like a four-door sedan, like 3,600 pounds. It's ridiculous. Really good brakes. I, I, I believe it does have the Brembos on it. I could be wrong, but it has ridiculously good brakes. See if I can get a launch in. I have two 65s, so like it is horrendously, it grips up like crazy. Yep, and hey, look at the brakes. Yeah. See, it's got Brembos. There's no way it doesn't have Brembos. That's ridiculous. I was like from 60 down to 35 in like a second. Okay. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, like, 
and um, subscribe if you want to see this thing or any other car. I have a, a lot of cars. I have a lot access to a lot of cars. You guys just got to let me know. The Solara is still here. The BMW is dormant. It's still here, though. Uh, the TSX, you know, for some reason, y'all want to see that. Still got it. Uh, what the fuck else is there? That's it, right? Yeah. And the Lexus, I don't think y'all care about that shit. Because y'all y'all Lexus drivers are weird as hell, man. But, yeah. If y'all want to see anything, let me know. Uh, I'll probably have a video coming out very soon. Because I got a catch can. So I'm going to be installing that. And showing you guys how to properly do it. Because the fucking, the new catch, like the catch cans that they sell you are stupid. Because... They, they literally don't work how the car is designed. And why would you not do something that's designed to work with the car? But anyways, I'll get to that later. But yeah, anyways, like and subscribe. See y'all, bro. See y'all later, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah.